All right, Shalom Akim. I want to start off by giving all praises and glory unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahushai Bahashim Rukakadash. Yahweh being the name of the Father, Yahushai being the name of the Son, and the Paleo Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew, the Hebrew that was actually spoken by the prophets and our Savior, the language, the that we will one day, once again, speak again. I want to give all uh, double honors to the apostles and elders who have continued to push this truth 100% according to the Bible and teach me this truth according to the Bible as well, in all sincerity and truth. I want to give uh, acknowledge all the Akim throughout the four corners of the earth who are pushing this truth in all sincerity as well. Putting their life on the line. I just wanted to get into um, a chapter because everything's relevant from back then, what is as well as today, you know. There, um, and I'm going to start off with this scripture. Which is Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. The thing that had been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done, is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. So we got to keep that in mind. Um, as much as people try to say we're we're living in new times that you know the the Bible is based on old times and those are biblical times and nobody lives like that no more and nobody should live like that you know the the, the scriptures say otherwise you know the the scriptures tell you that there is no new thing under the sun everything that's has has happened will happen again all right? Just as Israel has continued to go off, just as all the tribes have continued to go off and then return unto Yahweh Bashem Yahshad, the same thing's gonna happen. We went off. We we were cast and, and taken captive by by a strange nation, you know? And and that's because of our disobedience to Yahweh Bashem Yahshad. So now what we got to do is repent, come back, you know. We have to have faith that the ultimate sacrifice is Yahweh Shai. Okay? That that is the most perfect sacrifice that we could ever had been able to uh, give as a sacrifice, man. He gave himself as a sacrifice. For who? For you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans to return unto Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. Now I'm gonna go into um first Samuel. I'll probably just do it on on here as well. <laughs> this is first Samuel chapter seven, and I'm gonna start at verse one. And the man of Kiriha the Jarim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, and brought it unto the house of Abinadab, Abinadab in the hill, and sanctified Eleazar his son to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass while the ark abide in Kirhath Jerarim that the time was long, for it was twenty years. And all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. And Samuel spoke unto the house of Israel, saying, If ye do, if ye do return unto the Lord with all your heart, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from, and Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve Him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So, you know, right now, it's the same thing, you know. We're waiting, 
you know, if you believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, you believe that, you know, Yahweh Shai was that ultimate sacrifice, man. And now we're waiting to be delivered. After all these prophecies that have been going out, we're waiting on more prophecies, man. We're waiting on, on the mark of the beast to be implemented. We're waiting on martial law. These are prophecies that are spoken about in the Bible, man. You've had earthquakes all this year. You had uproars of the people all this year. There's tensions out in the Middle East. You, you had a... Uh, um, Volcanoes being set off this year in places they haven't been. You've had hailstorms in places that never really seen hail the way that they have. A lot of times there was a hailstorm out in Mexico and it was unprecedented. You know, it was just a storm that happened and they got slammed with a, a bunch of hail. Um, I remember out here in Denver, there was an area that got hit with uh, several feet of hail, and it was just a certain area. It's something like that, that things that never really happened like that before, you know? What happened, um, also, um, let's see, you've had snowstorms in places that don't get snow, right? The weather's all messed up, plain and simple. You have a... a the tornadoes and stuff like that, you know, so there's nothing new under the sun, you know, we're waiting for because Yahweh Shai told us that there's many things that we have to see before his return. All right. So if you believe that he he's going to return, you have to also believe in all the prophecies he spoke about. Where we see the times you have to be diligent. Because right now, what are we doing in America? We're we're being captives. We're 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 serving our captivity for disobeying Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. Let me keep going on. Of uh, First uh, Samuel seven and four. Then the children of Israel did put away Baalim and Astaroth and served the Lord only. And Samuel said, "Gather all Israel to Mizpeh, and I will pray for you unto the Lord." And they gathered together to Mizpeh and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said, There we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel and Mizpeh. And with the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpeh. The lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said, un said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our power for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Pil Philistines. So, hey, now, now we're doing the same thing, you know. What are, what are Starting from with the apostles and the elders on down. By going out there on the highways and uh, hedges, by go uh, making these videos on YouTube, we continue to pray. Because why? Because we know that 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 Esau is gonna come down, man. As we're returning back unto Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, the, these uh, our enemies, the, these heathen and these Edomites are gonna come against us. And you see that happening. Uh, what was that? Um. There's another one. Of, let's see. I might be jumping around a little bit, but. I'm going to go into the full chapter. This is uh, Isaiah 59. Uh, 
I'm going to start at... I'm going to start at 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the West, and the name is Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. All right? So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the West, and His glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in as a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And that stand, standard goes back into spiritual powers, man. He's going to give us... Uh, he's going to... Uh, 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 Make sure that some of his elect are going to be able to fight against the enemy, man. All right. There's going to be some uh, of his elect that are going to be taken in and beheaded. But there's some that some that are going to be given spiritual powers. All right. And that's another thing you have to uh, believe in. All right. This is verse 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression. And Jacob saith the Lord. So, hey, the Redeemer, Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, is going to come. And, and he's only coming for those that, that turn away from transgression, that turn away from sin. Okay, that try living their life a as righteous as possible. Okay? And verse 21. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. So, amen. After after Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahshai comes and delivers us, man, hey, when, 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 when we're in that kingdom... Our his word is never gonna depart from our for, from our inward parts, man. We're gonna live in total righteousness, but right now we we have to uh, fight for that, right? Because we're not perfect, we still go off. But you you have to learn how to sin less, okay? You can't continue saying uh, being like the, your modern day Christians or your Catholics and sit there and say, oh, well on Sunday I could repent. On Sunday I could repent. No, you got to change your life. There has people have to see that within you that you're not that same person no more. And people are going to scoff and mock, but it doesn't matter. Your families are going to be one of your worst enemies, man, to sit there and scoff and mock. But you know what? You got to keep on pushing cuz this deliverance is what we're waiting for. I'm going to go back into uh Samuel Uh, chapter uh, First Samuel seven and eight, and the children of Israel said unto Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our power for us, that He will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. So we know that 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 in this time, this go around, that the Most High, a hey, yes, He's gonna come back and redeem us, but there's also gonna He's also gonna lift us up a standard against His enemies through His elect men. So you can't fear. Let's see. And, and Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering. Holy, ho holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel. And the Lord heard him. And Samuel was offering the burnt offering. The Philistines drew near to, to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder. And that day upon the Philistines, on that day upon the Philistines, and discomfort them, and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of mess fear and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under Bethkar. Then Samuel took up a stone and set it between Mesfeh and Shen and called the name of it Ebenezer saying hitherto hath the lord helped us so hey man that there's going to be a great deliverance also when when uh yahweh bashim yashai comes and takes us out of babylon the great and those that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth but there's also going to be um there's also going to be a memorial here man and that memorial is going to be that fire 
that that desert, that wilderness, that that with that smoke that burns forever, right? So the people know not to do wickedness. So they remember what the Yahweh Shem Yahushai did to to these Edomites and these hidden nation when he delivered Israel. When he, because it's already written, but we're waiting for that day when he delivered us out of all four corners of the earth and the land of the north. And let me get that that verse as well. This is Zechariah 2 and 6. It says, uh, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. Because, uh, hey, throughout all the Americas, man, the United States is known as the north. It's known as the land of the north. North America, everybody always understands it with that. All right? And you could also, uh, just like Babylon, you could also place it in that. All right? With America. America is Babylon. You know, the land of the north. All right? It is the daughter of Babylon. The land of the Chaldeans, okay? It says, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the fourth, four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. So, hey, yeah, we're scattered throughout all four corners of the earth, but the majority of us are here in, in the United States. Let's see. This is First Samuel 7 and 11. And the men of Israel went out of Mesfim and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came unto Beth Car. Okay, Shalak, yeah, I already read that. Um, this is First uh, Samuel 7 and 13. So the Philistines were subdued and they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. All the days of Samuel and the city which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel from Ekron even unto Gath. And the coast thereof did Israel deliver out of the hands of the Philistines. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. So there's another thing too. The Most High is going to restore everything back unto us, man. All right. The land that they have is uh, polluted. Those lands out there in the Middle East, that he's going to return those lands back unto us. Let's see if I can find that scripture. I think it might be this one. Let me see the first. So I could be patient. If I can't find it, I'll just continue reading. These are all good, good uh, books here, but it's not what I want. Let me see if I can find it a different way.
Slovakia. I think this is where it's at. Yep, this is it. This is Isaiah 60. Here it is. This is Isaiah 60 and uh, 16 or 15. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated so that no man went through thee, I will make thee eternal exceedingly and eternal exceedingly a joy of many generations. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles and shall suck the breasts of the kings and thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer the mighty one of Jacob. For brass will I bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and for wood, brass, and stones, iron. I will also make thy officers peace, and thy ex exactors righteous. Violence shall no more be heard of in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation, and thy gates praise. So right here, it's getting into how Yahweh Shem Yahshai, Amen. When he comes and brings that destruction to the heathen nations and these uh Edomites and you two thirds that want to continue living as Gentiles, Amen. Everybody's gonna know who Yahweh Shem Yahshai is. All right, and and that day he's gonna take us back into our lands, man, and we're gonna live off of uh these heathen nations, man. All right. The, 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 these heathens, when it says we're going to suck the milk of the Gentiles and the breasts of kings, that means we're going to be living off their riches, okay? I'm back in Samuel, chapter, uh, 1 Samuel 7. Let's see. And 15. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. And he went from year to year in circuit to Beth Bethleth and Gilgal and Mesfet and judge Israel in all those places. And his return was the, to Ramah, for there was his house, and he and there he judged Israel, and there he built an altar unto the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. So you know, just keep in mind, you know, every time you read these books. Know that everything that has happened will happen again. All right. That's why it talks about it. Every time he talks about, you know, Israel going off and them doing sacrifices. Hey, we don't have to do a sacrifice no more. You know, if you you, you are sincere and you, you, you're you putting your faith in, and you're trusting Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, that Yahweh Shai was that ultimate sacrifice. And you're trying to live your life as best as you can according to the scriptures. You have that faith. You you should be able to live your life and, and know that he's going to come back and redeem you. But hey, all we could do is hope for it, okay? Because we have gone off. We have continuously gone off and gone in our in the ways of the heathen and not in the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. So that's why we're supposed to put off that old man. All right, but I'm going to leave it off there. I don't want to make it too over, too long, too overwhelming. Oh, you know, Lord willing, this this uh, lesson was edifying unto the elect. I'm going to give all praises and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Bahashim, Harakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS. And peace and mercy be unto the elect, uh, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. With that, shalom.